Hey, this is Digital Bike Computing. Today we're gonna to go through a quick overview on how to configure the high-end settings, the configuration options on a Dell EMC Unity SAM. All right, so we're gonna assume that you've already configured the storage device on the network, that it's available on the network, that it's got an IP address, it's available uh, via a host name. So we're gonna open up a web browser and connect into the backend storage device itself via the IP address. Here we are on our Unisphere. You'll see that my SAN is called SAN01A, and this is just the basic dashboard of the uh, the Unity SAN. You'll see it got some system health, storage. So to customize the SAN, if it's a brand new SAN, or even if you want to have a look at existing settings on the SAN, we're going to go up to the top right to the update system settings area. When you first set up your SAN, you're going to go through this initial configuration wizard. Uh, each of the items that are listed in here are covered uh, in each of the individual items that are in your general settings area. This is essentially just more of a, um, a wizard. Uh, different sections here on the left, you can go through one by one and customize it the way that you want. The very first area is the license information. This, so this is essentially what is your uh, SAN, what is the Unity license for? So you can see some information there around what the Unity is licensed for. You can install a brand new license and you can order the license online or through your uh, third party, your distributor, your vendor, whoever it is that you get your licenses from. Uh, you can then do software upgrades straight through here. You'll see that it gives you the name, the model, and the serial number of your Unity, as well as its version number. You can see the version number at the moment when it was last released, and you can start the upgrade straight from here. You can also download it first and then install it afterwards also. Drive firmware gives you an overview of all of the disks that are installed inside your Unity, as well as the type. These are SAS drives, you may have flash also, uh, and it gives you the firmware version that they are at also. So if there are newer firmware versions available for your hard drives, you install them and update them through here. Language packs, if you want any other additional languages for your SAN, and then your system limits. So these are your sort of the defaults as to what your SAN, um, I guess the, the, the maximums that are allowed for certain functions on your SAN. So you can go and customize these if you need to. So for example, maximum pull count is 20. It won't allow me to create more than 20 pulls on this Unity. Users and groups, you've got your default admin. You can add some additional users straight into here. And then directory services lets you essentially connect your SAN to Active Directory uh, or something that uses LDAP. Um, so Active Directory could use LDAP. You, you essentially you bind it to your domain. Uh, you add the you know relevant permissions uh, or a relevant account credentials that have relevant permissions to be able to add the uh, the SAN, the Unity to the domain directly. Management, you set your time. You can also connect it to your NTP server. So this is your time server. If you wanna make sure that your time is in sync with your overall domain or your NTP server itself. DNS has your DNS servers that you want to um, have across your Unity. So you want to add these in manually. You can obtain them automatically as well through something like a DHCP service. Unisphere Central is a cool feature if you have multiple devices. Um, you can read a little description here, but essentially if you have multiple devices, multiple Unities, for example, you can centrally uh, control these through one central uh, Unisphere Central location. Here you configure the, the name of your Unity, uh, as well as the IP address, the subnet, and the gateway, if you're going to put in putting those in statically or they can be obtained through DHCP and they can be reserved on the DHCP side. I generally like to go in and put them in uh, manually for um, just, it just makes more sense in my perspective, uh, as well as your IP version six, if you are using that. Remote login, we're not going to touch. You can leave that as the default. Fallback policy essentially allows 
your storage or, you know, I guess to automatically switch back to the primary storage server. Um, if the primary storage, storage server is restored, uh, if it is failed, it essentially will fail it back. So I've always got that as on by default to automatically fail back if required. Performance is your IO limits. Uh, manage the, the bandwidth, the throughput of data as it says. Uh, of your LANs, your, your data stores, snapshots, etc. So I always have this as active so that it can essentially adjust it as it needs. And then if you need encryption on your SAN, um, I currently do not have this encrypted. Storage configuration goes through three separate sections here around fast cache. Uh, so this is used essentially for tiering purposes. Uh, if you have flash based disks on your SAN, you can go and configure this uh, so that you have you know, fast cache drives um, and VP as well, if you have that active or not. Um, essentially, it's just going to dump data into your fast cache to do certain features, certain functionalities, and then move the, the data back off if it needs to move it to a different location. Essentially, it's the same way that what cache works or cache for those in America. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can use that if you if you so want to, but generally you're gonna use that if you do have a flash base or a mix of a hybrid flash and a SAS based um, uh, disk configuration. You see here I've got my drives. At the moment I've got 12 drives and this is how I've got them configured. As you can see that fast is not actually in use. So proxy server essentially lets you connect your SAN through a proxy if you have that set up in an organization. If you need the SAN to be able to go out to the internet via a proxy, you go and configure that through here. Your Dell EMC support credentials. So these are the credentials that you're going to use to allow your, um, your SAN or essentially your Dell EMC account um, to be able to go and access a number of Dell EMC support services, which include uh, ESRS, which we're going to cover in a little bit, uh, the online support, as well as viewing your support credentials. So you add in there your username and password. If you don't have these, you can configure them through the Dell EMC support portal. Your relevant contact information is added in here. Um, this is used really to, you know, if you're logging a ticket with support so that they at least know who they are talking to and to really help you with the registration of your SAN. And here is where we configure ESRS, uh, which is EMC Secure Remote Services. This essentially is a automated health and system monitoring capability for your storage system, as it says. Uh, essentially, if your SAN has problems, um, if you require a replacement disk, if you're having uh, you know, high CPU, if there's a storage process that has gone down, something of that nature, uh, Dell EMC know about it. Um, and they're essentially notified uh, when you are having issues on your Dell EMC, which is actually quite helpful uh, because they can actually organize replacement disks, for example, uh, to be sent out to you without you having to go and order a replacement disk if a disk has failed. So you have to go and configure this. You do this all through the Dell EMC portal, so configure that through there. Uh, and then once it's all good to go, you should be having a connected status. It can be a little bit difficult to get this up and running, but you just work directly with Dell EMC to help them to set this up for you. To get this enabled, you have to have some, uh, there's some prerequisites, some requirements here, uh, including getting ESRS connectivity enabled um, between your Unity and ESRS to go up to Cloud IQ. How are you going to access parts of your SAN, of your Unity? Um, you can use CHAP, which essentially is an authentication for iSCSI. Um, if you have you know, a username and password, secret passwords, those sort of things, to be able to allow connectivity between um, you know, your, your LUNs and your data stores if you're using something like VMware, for example. Uh, and then you've got the recover point as well for CHAP authentication. Uh, recover point is what allows you to do replication between two unities uh, and use something like recover point for disaster recovery and for redundancy from a SAN perspective. Gives you a little bit of an overview here of how your Ethernet is configured. So in my case, I've got four Ethernet ports which are used for my data, as well as management port and a sync replication um, port there as well. Uh, and you'll see that right off here, I've got one link is up against my storage processor A and storage processor B has got another one, which means that out of the four Ethernet ports on each storage processor, 
one of them is connected, my management port is connected as well, as well as my sync management port as well, my replication management port is also up. It's always very important to set up your SAN with multiple levels of redundancy. You've obviously got two storage processes, but when you're setting it up with network connections, with network cables, uh, for your iSCSI or fiber connectivity, whatever it may be, you obviously set it up with multiple levels of high availability. So this just lets you add further control and flexibility to how you're configuring that. Fiber channel, if you have any fiber channel ports, uh, so a, a HBA card uh, with fiber channel connectivities, you'll see some information in here. You can also go and configure some different routes. You can manage routes, you can create different routes um, from one point to the other. Configuring different VLANs, if you have a requirement for multiple VLANs and you wanna split up your Unity parts with different VLANs, you can configure it through here. And then the ISNS, which is essentially your storage uh, network um, settings uh, around the protocols if you need to use ISNS also. Configure here just your overall settings for your threshold alerts if you want to generate or pull threshold alerts. And then there's proactive remote support suppression which essentially lets the, uh, the Unity uh, try to resolve some issues before they have problems or before those significant problems impact your business. So here you configure your email settings, including your SMTP. So if you've got an SMTP server, Exchange, or a different mail server, you configure that in here, as well as the email that you want alerts to be coming from and going to if there are alerts that are triggered from your Unity. Further to that is SNMP. If you have, um, uh, if you have a, a monitoring system that needs to see SNMP traps, uh, alerts, monitors, etc., um, you can configure these in here so that you are alerted correctly uh, through some sort of monitoring alerting system for your SAN. So there you have it, that is my overview. I hope you found this helpful. There's definitely a lot of stuff that uh, you can go into on the storage device. If you want to know more, let me know. We've also got a whole bunch of other videos that talk about SAN and NASAs um, of various types and the different technologies associated with those, as well as a whole bunch of other technology videos across my Digital Bike Computing YouTube channel. Either way, I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and follow me as well to keep updated on my new videos as they get released. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.